Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammadin Wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam I welcome all of you, my dear respected brothers and sisters We are still studying and benefiting from the great work of this great scholar, al-Sheikh al-Allama al-Faqih Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Atimin rahimahullah ta'ala and for those that would like to ask questions after the class inshallah ta'ala which is usually we do 20 minutes class and 10 minutes questions they can call they can uh, text this number not to call they can text this number 561 566 6380 561 566 6380 the sheikh rahimahullah ta'ala He's talking about what nullifies the fast. What nullifies the fast. So he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, number three, eating and drinking. This is when food or drink is transported into the interior of the body, whether by way of the mouth or the nose, depending on what is being drunk or eaten, like those people who have IV, you know, and the like, those who are in the hospital and the like. It is not permissible for a fasting person to inhale the smoke of incense, bukhur, not permissible to inhale it, such that it will enter into the, his interior, since smoke is a substance, it has a substance. But as for smelling pleasant fragrance and perfume, then there is no harm and sin in this. The Sheikh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, number four. He said, number four, whatever bears the same function as eating or drinking, such as nutritive inject injections. Nutritive injections, which serves as food. Because some people, they are sick. They cannot take solid food. So they give them shots. Nutritive shots in injections, which serves as food. And drink supplement. But for as for injections that are not alimental or nutritive, they do not cause one to break the fast. For example like anesthesia because anesthesia is not food is not food so anesthesia for example you had a pain and then the doctor he gave you a shot anesthesia you know to numb that area so that he can work on it or something like that then this one does not break your fast does not break your fast likewise the dentist because the dentist works in your gum and he, you know, gives you a shot to numb the gum because of the pain and the like. This one does not, you know, break the fast. Does not break the fast. So the injections are two types. Those that are alimental means that they are like food, nutritive. And those who are not alimental and they are not nutritive. They do not cause one to break the fast regardless of whether they are injected through the veins or the muscles. It doesn't matter whether they are injected through the, through the veins or the muscles. They, don't, they, they will not consider um, be a, a, a fast breaker. Number four, five. The Sheikh, he said, the number five is... Emitting blood due to hijama. 
Hijama, some of you may not be a, uh, a familiar with it. Hijama actually is from the medicine of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he said in the hadith, إِنَّ أَمْتَلَ مَا تَدَاوَيْتُمْ بِهِ الْحِجَامَةُ وَالْعُودُ الْهِنْدِ He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the best remedy that you can use is al-hijama, wet cupping, and the Indian costus, al-qust al-hindi, the Indian costus. So these are the best remedies the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in his hadith, and al-imam al-qayyim rahimahullah mentioned in his book, al-tib, al-nabawi, the medicine of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and there is no doubt that the hijama has a tremendous benefit, health benefit. It's very good uh, to do it, you know, every six months, or at least every year. And what it does, actually, the hijama, when a person does the wet cupping, uh, gets rid of the toxins in the blood gets rid of the toxins in the blood. And uh, you see, sometimes when some people are being cupped, you see how dark the blood is. Very dark, subhanAllah. So after they get cupped, then the, the blood, subhanAllah, becomes cleaner. It's like a car. When you do uh, a tune-up to a car, an oil change and the like, same thing. The body needs that. Because our body <coughs> are susceptible to many of these toxins, whether they are airborne or they are something that we, you know, it is in the food and the, and the drink and the like, lead and other than that. So basically, when you do hijama, you rid your body from these toxins. So it is amazing. Amazing medicine of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Sheikh, he said, according to analogy, all forms of emitting blood intentionally okay intentionally in other words if someone it did happen to you you were for for example in the kitchen and uh, you got cut can happen you got cut by the blade by something a machine there sharp and then you got you got cut and uh, the, but there was a lot of blood it does not break it will not break your fast Anything that you do unintentionally will not break your fast. Uh, the Shaykh he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, which affect the body, like hijama, does apply to this. As for the emission of a small amount of blood as a part of a medical examination, like a sample when you go to the, to the doctor and they do um, blood work. Blood work, that's what they call them, blood work. Blood work, they don't nullify your fast. They don't nullify black samples or black work. Those, they don't nullify your fast. The Sheikh, he said, and, and so on. This does not break the fast since it does not affect the body by weakening it as in the case of al-hijama because al-hijama weakens the body. The body becomes very weak. Number six, vomiting intentionally. Intentionally. And I wonder who would want to do that. Subhanallah. Who would want to vomit intentionally. But if he does, someone was playing around and he did, then he has to make up for the day. He has to make up for the day. But if someone was overwhelmed... He could not control it. You know, uh, you know, especially in the first days of the fast, happens to a lot of people. You know, they start vomiting, you know, and they, they, they get their stomach gets upset and they start vomiting, you know, unintentionally, involuntarily. Then that one does not break the fast. It does not break the fast. The Sheikh, he said, this means releasing out what food and drink is in the stomach 
And I want to add a benefit for you here, brothers and sisters, if you ever had a situation where you began to vomit and then you really had a very sour stomach and upset stomach, I'm going to tell you one thing you do. Inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will go away. I, I tested it myself and it worked. Vinegar. There's nothing like vinegar. I know it's a little bit, you know, tough, sour. So you could dilute it a little bit with water. You can mix it with water a little bit. You know, um, mix vinegar with water, whether it is um, apple cider vinegar or just a regular vinegar, the white vinegar. Just mix it up a little bit and drink it up. Subhanallah. It is amazing. It is amazing. So I was thinking I had a situation where, you know, one of the Ramadans years ago, and I had a situation like that. Subhanallah, it was tough and I was vomiting and everything. And subhanallah, I took the vinegar, I mixed it with the, with water and drank it up. And subhanallah, I went to sleep and I woke up. I woke up, subhanallah, hungry, ready to go. <laughs> so this is the, a benefit I felt like sharing with you, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And those who have kids also, they can do that as well. Tayyip. The Sheikh, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said number seven. Number seven, nullifier. The release of blood from menstruation and postpartum bleeding. Okay, the difference between these two is very important, not only for the females to know this, but also the male, they, know, they need to know this. The male, they need to know this, the husband. And unfortunately, some of the men, they don't understand the affair of the women. They don't understand these things. So they need to learn also. Because you are a husband, you need to know these affairs. The menstruation is the period, the, 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 the cycle that comes upon the woman. So when she has that cycle, then it is not permissible for her to fast or to perform the salat. But a lot of sisters, they completely shut down and this is completely wrong. Because a menstruated sister can do many things, even when she is in, on her cycle. She can do many things. A lot of sisters, they don't know this. You can. And some of them, they feel sad. Everybody fasting, and they're not fasting, and the like. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed upon the daughters of Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam. And the Prophet sallam, he told he told Aisha this. He told Aisha radiallahu anha. Because Aisha radiallahu anha, she came with the Prophet sallam to perform hajj. To perform hajj. And then when they, when, they, when they got to Mecca, her cycle came upon her. Her cycle started. So she began to cry. And then the Prophet sallam, he said, what's the matter? She, she told him that her cycle started. And he said, uh, inna, He said, this affair, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means this affair of menstruation. Allah has decreed upon the daughters of Adam. Upon the daughters of Adam. Then he told her brother, Abdul Rahman, to take her to Tan'im. Take her out to Tan'im so that she can Assume al-ihram with Umrah. With Umrah. Naam. So, <clears throat> طيب, that's menstruation. And uh, the postpartum bleeding is after the woman gives birth. After the woman gives birth, she's going to be bleeding. And this bleeding period can last up to 40 days can last up to 40 days. Some scholars, they said even 60 days. Even 60 days. But the, uh, this matter depends on uh, each specific lady because some of them, they may get cleaned up before that time. Some of them, before even 40 days, they become clean from 
the postpartum bleeding. So the women, they know, the women, they know when they become clean, right? So when they become clean, then it is required upon them to make ghusl, to make ghusl. And another thing, like if a woman became clean uh, before al-fajr, before al-fajr, then she can make the intention to fast. She can make the intention to fast. But if she became clean after fajr, then she has to make up that day as well. And the other days she missed. She has to make up that day and the other days that she has missed. Likewise, if she became clean uh, after fajr, then she is required to perform Salat al-Fajr as well because the time is still in. <coughs> or she became clean after Salat al-Duhr or after, after Salat al-Asr. Then she can combine Duhr and Asr together. Likewise, if she became clean after Isha, she can pray Maghrib and Isha together. It's very important, especially for sisters. The Sheikh he said, a fasting person does not break his fast with any of the above unless he first meets three conditions. This is very important. Look, subhanallah, this legislation is based upon knowledge. This legislation is, up, is based upon justice, subhanallah. This legislation is based upon rules and regulation. And all the conditions have to be fulfilled. And all the barriers have to be removed. All the conditions have to be fulfilled. And all the barriers have to be removed. طيب. The Sheikh said, and I want you, brothers and sisters, to pay attention to this because this is extremely important. Extremely important. He said, he must be aware of its ruling. Must be aware of its ruling. And the time that it applies to. And this is very important. And this, we can, we can, we can actually apply this in different situations. Like, for example, you have some of the Muslims that grow up in a Sufi environment where the people worship the graves, worship the, the, you know, the graves of the so-called awliya, righteous people and the like. And these people, they don't know any better. They don't have any connection with the scholars. They don't have any connection with the student of knowledge. They don't have no access to the people of knowledge. And they believe these are the people of knowledge who are teaching them to worship the graves and the like from the deviant people of the Sufiya and the like. Okay? Like those who follow the, 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 the Sufi orders, like the Shadli Sufi order, Naqshbandi, Sahrawardi, and Al Jishti in India and other areas. Tayyip? So, if this person worships the grave of Sheikh Abdul Qadr al Jailani or Mu'in al Din al Jishti or one of the so called awliya, then the ruling does not apply on this person. We cannot just come and take him out of the fold of Islam and say well, he's a mushrik, he's a kafir. Yes, his action, yes. It's kufr and shirk. But it doesn't necessarily mean the person is a kafir. <clears throat> Unless all the conditions have to be fulfilled and all the, the barriers have to be removed. Okay? All right. So we come to this person and we teach him. We say, my dear brother, you are Muslim. And this is haram for you, what you're doing? Because this is shirk. Major shirk, it takes you out of the fold of Islam. This is the proof and evidence from the Kitab and Sunnah. Show him the ayah from the Quran. In Allah, la yaghfiru an yushraka bih. Wa yaghfiru ma duuna dalika ni man yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive anyone who ascribe partners with him. But he will forgive less than that from the major sins other than shirk, to whom he wills. We explained this to him 
and he accepts, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. But if he does not accept, after the proof and evidence has been established on him, then the ruling changes now. And this person is a mushrik. If he dies upon that, he will go to the hellfire. Because Allah said so in the Quran. إِنَّهُ مَا يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَلَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever joins partners with Allah, Allah has made Jannah haram for that person. وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ And his abode will be the hellfire. وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ And the transgressors and the oppressors, those who committed shirk, وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ They will have no supporters. We're going to stop right here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beneficial knowledge and righteous action. We have a question, inshallah, we'll, we'll answer this question and we'll go from there. Now, Okay, um, the question is regarding the six fasts in Shawwal. Shawwal. <coughs> Shawwal. If a, must, if a woman has fasted, has fast to make up, can she combine her intention to make up the fast she has missed? Yes. The fast six <coughs> is Shawwal. Um, yeah. Let's okay, see. the question is, the Prophet وسلم, he said, whoever fasted Ramadan and follow it up with six days of Shawwal, it's like he fasted the whole year. It's like he fasted the whole year. So someone may wonder, how come that if someone fasted 36 days, he will get the reward as if he fasted the whole year? How is that? It's very simple. Because every good deed that you do, you get 10 times the reward. So, 30, uh, 36 times 10, how much is that? 360, right? So, basically, it's like you fasted the whole year. Allahu Akbar. And uh, the grace of Allah and the blessing of Allah, they are tremendous. They are abundant. Now, going back to that question, after mentioning the hadith, the scholars, they said, because the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever fasted Ramadan, completed the month of Ramadan. So in other words, if a woman did not complete because of her menstrual menstruation or her period or postnatal bleeding or something like that, then she has to complete the fast of Ramadan first. Meaning that those days that she, she had missed, she has to make them up first before the six days of Shawwal. So that's why the, the, the many of the scholars, they said, you cannot combine the two intention in one in this situation. Because he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever completes Ramadan, so, he has to complete the 30 days of Ramadan. So my question of follow yes. would be like, so let's say after Ramadan is done, she can start, make up fast. And after 30 days, then she can do the sixth day? No, but no. She has to, the, 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 the six days, they have to be in the month of Shawwal. They can't be outside the month of Shawwal. Oh, okay. They That's have to be in the month of Shawwal. Yes. No. But she has to make up what she missed yeah, yeah, yeah. from Ramadan first. Because he said, whoever fasted <clears throat> Ramadan and follow it up. Because you cannot like... Um, you know, combine two intention here because of the hadith. Because he said, whoever com completed and fasted the month of Ramadan, then follow it up with six days of Shawwal. Okay. But in the case of, uh, for example, you're fasting on a day, for example, Arafah, the day of Arafah, and you had a day to make up from, uh, from Ramadan. So you fasted to make up that day. At the same time, you had the intention, you know, to fast because this is a blessed day. Inshallah, you will get the reward for fasting on that particular day with that intention. Okay, just now, not the shawa. Not the shawa. Yes. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, yeah. So I have a question. So uh, yes. let's say if you have 
like if you dry mouth and stuff, you have mucus. Yes. Then you have you have a clear throat and you get back maybe up to the throat. Sometimes even get back to your mouth, like uh, unintentionally. Unintentionally. Well, you have a clear throat, so it's kind of like you know there's mucus coming back. But you don't swallow it. Oh, you don't. So you can't. You don't. Sw you can't swallow it. Oh, so even though it's from your body, but you even can't. if it's from your body, if you swallow it, you break it fast. So if you did that before, you but notice. if if it happened unintentionally, it does not break the fast. But if you know this after you did it, if you if you did not know what, yeah, the, what this is yeah, what the yeah, sheikh yeah. is okay, saying. Okay, okay. So in order for the ruling to to be applicable, then this principle they have to be applicable as well. That you have to be aware of it. If oh. you are not aware of it, there is no sin upon you, and you don't have to make up anything. What about what about the saliva then? Saliva, you don't swallow it. You try as much as you can. But if you did, like, it was overwhelming, for example, right? It was overwhelming. In that case, there is no problem, inshallah. So you can't swallow saliva? You, you try not to. Uh... You try not to. I mean, if you can't, if it's uncontrollable, like, what I mean by that, like, if there is a lot, like, a lot of it. Yeah. Like, a lot of it. Not, not like normal saliva. Like normal saliva is okay, but if there is like a lump, like a lump, yeah, yeah, no, don't, don't, don't okay. swallow it. Yeah, but normal saliva is okay. You swallow it. What about like uh, when you're doing wudu, right? Yeah, so and you rinse your mouth and stuff. There definitely are water in the mouth. So right, it's okay. For that is is all right. Because sometimes I feel like you know something. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay because it's something beyond your control. Yeah. And then you have to make wudu. Okay. Yeah. So you don't yeah. have to like dry your mouth and all that stuff. No, 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 no. You don't okay. have to dry your mouth. And um, another thing, <laughs> Prophet Sallallahu mentioned about the fact about the making wudu. He said, and um, when you when you sniff in the water, sniff it in. He he said, you can sniff it in, but and when you fast in, take it easy. Huh. Don't try to sniff it in all the way in because it will go. Go down to your throat. So that broke a fast? If you no, if you, if you don't do it, oh, okay. if you do it unintentionally, there is no, there is no sin upon you. It okay. does not break the fast. Oh, okay. Okay. Why so. yuck? The Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, the first, he must be aware of its ruling and the time that it applies to. Number two, he must remember i.e. not accountable for forgetfulness. For example, if someone forgot completely, this can happen, and he goes to the kitchen, and he, uh, you know, got himself a sandwich, and he sat on the table, and he ate and drank and everything, and by the, the, by the time he finished, he realized that he was supposed to be fasting, there is nothing upon him. There is nothing upon this person. So he can continue his fast. And the Sheikh is going to talk about that, inshallah. The Sheikh said, the third, he must do it intentionally and willingly. Intentionally and willingly. In other words, if he did it unwillingly, means someone, when he said intentionally, you had the intention to break it. And willingly, you were not forced. Like, for example, if someone put a gun to your head, right? He said, I know you're fasting. If you don't drink, I will pull the trigger. And you know he will. You can drink. Okay, did you drink willingly or unwillingly? Unwillingly, right? Does your fast break? It does not break. Because it's something you can't control. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold you accountable for something beyond your scope. As Allah said in the Quran, رَبَّنَا لَا تُعَاخِدْنَا إِنْ نَسِينَا وَأَخْطَعْنَا Our Lord, do not hold us accountable if we forget and we make a mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will not hold you accountable. And uh, we can continue, inshallah, next time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all beneficial knowledge and righteous action. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. 
وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته